Welcome back to Tenaris Adventures. When I was visiting Brazil this spring, I got a chance to sit down with five employees from Jagori Games, and I asked them a series of questions to all of them to get a better idea of who they are and what interests them in developing a deep game like Tenaris Adventures and a massive world like Tenaris RPG. I hope this look into the people of Dragori gives you a better insight into what drives these guys into developing dungeon crawler board games and RPG adventures. Welcome back to part four of the interview series. Today is Dan. He is one of the three main directors of Dragori, so the original three guys that started the company. Uh, one little fact is uh, Dan was a chess champion when uh, he was younger, and uh, he's definitely the driving force at Dragori for all those little fun puzzles and riddles that you find throughout Arena the Contest, and that uh, will definitely exist in Tenaris Adventures. He is uh, the force behind that. Dan is uh, definitely probably the, the oddest one in the group of the guys. Uh, just And when I say that, I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean that he's, uh, he's much more uh, kind of introspective about things, uh, a little more reserved. But uh, it was great to see his excitement for playing Tenaris Adventures, even when it was about 2 o'clock in the morning. If you guys do get a chance, make sure to check out my live stream video. I feel like that's uh, one of the times more recently I've gotten to see that side of Dan come out again. And if you've seen the er earlier Tenaris Adventures updates, you get that same feeling from him because he wrote a lot of those updates. Anyway, Dan is coming up. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right. Welcome. Uh, so, what's your name and what's your role at Dragori Games? So, my name is Dan. Uh, and... Uh, I'm overall project director and a developer. Uh, my official title would be creative director uh, and a fusion between this and editor in chief. Awesome. Uh, so what was your job before working here, Grigori? I worked in law. That's what I studied and I worked it for a few years uh, until I became director of Dragon Games, a director and co-founder. Uh, do you want to say what kind of law? Yeah, uh, it's labor law. Uh, and before that, I was a lawyer uh, for one year only. I was a lawyer. I worked with all kinds of uh, different branches. All right. So, what are your interests outside of gaming? Uh, I kind of don't. If you ask me, what are your other interests <laughs> besides? Uh, well, I don't worry. Say, there's a gaming one too. Yeah, I like to, I like to read and watch movies. TV shows. That's basically uh, okay. Uh, so, other side. What uh, are your favorite games or RPG products? Uh, I'm kind of an unusual guy here uh, in the office. I like uh, simulation games, especially sports like the NBA 2K, MLB The Show. I like this kind of uh, racing. And I also, of course, my favorite game of all time is chess. Wow. I played it a lot as I grew up. Uh, when I was like eight years old, I went to the chess club. And when it opened at 4 p.m. and I stayed there until my mom, my mom would pick me up like 10 p.m. So I played hours and hours every day. And you were a uh, chess master? I'm not a chess master, <laughs> but I have played quite a few tournaments and the school level. Okay. Uh, so what do you enjoy about working at Dragori Games? Uh, what I think is most interesting about working here is uh, that every day is different from the other, you know. Uh, I'm not doing the same exact thing every single day. One day I'm uh, working on uh, setting up a Kickstarter page. On, on the other day, I'm uh, just spend the whole day talking with my partners about what implementations we'll do with for a game design problem that we have. And another day, I'm going to have a meeting with Cristiano, with whom you talked just earlier, and we'll discuss the story of the game. So what I like about it is that every day is a new challenge, and every day 
is different and every day I have to put my mind to work at its fullest uh, because it's not a simple task, you know, it's not something that you have a manual to Yeah, to. definitely. Uh, so what is your favorite Jagori product uh, or game mode or character or mechanic, past or future? Uh, I think that my favorite product would be Tanada's Adventures um, because it simply took uh, everything that we wanted to do in Arena but couldn't and put it to another level with spent much more time developing it and I really like how it has a little bit of everything and you're not uh, you're going to play it uh, the way you want to like I don't like puzzles so you won't be doing them uh, I like puzzles so you have a lot of puzzles to do and uh, there's a rich story uh, there are like everyone knows 100 uh, more than 100 quests so I think that it is the full experience the city phase is not something uh, that you just go to the to town to oh, okay I got this gold I'm going to get my items let's go to the next step no it's a machi machine that you try to build uh, so I think that it has a little bit of everything and I like the way that everything was done alright what do you think the fans will enjoy the most about Tenaris Adventures oh if I knew that this question, <laughs> if I knew that this question was coming up I wouldn't yeah, right? have to talk that much well so, sometimes you, what you like the most isn't the same as what you think other people will like the most yeah what what people are going to enjoy the most about it um, I think uh, that uh, the diversity of options perhaps you have like 60 heroes and each of them has a unique passive power and you have literally millions of possible uh, team compositions and even the quest themselves even though there are more than 100 uh, every time you're going to play the, the quest it's going to be a completely different experience because you have different facts and different heroes and different situations in the campaign the background uh, so uh, one thing that I would like to see if the community uh, uh, got together to do this I would like I'm really curious to see what everyone's calendar will be there is this a campaign log and you get to write down in the calendar what which quests uh, you uh, what quests you played mm -hmm. and uh, okay. how well you performed and the heroes that went to, do, to play this quest so essentially the path they took yeah and I know for sure that you can put this game in front of one million groups no calendar will ever be the same. Uh, no one will prioritize the same thing. No one will build the same relationships with different characters. No one will uh, do the exact same quests in the exact same order. So I'm, I would be really curious to see that. And I think that people will enjoy seeing that they will do their own campaign in their own fashion, prioritizing what they want. And their campaign will be unique in the entire world in history. There will never be two campaigns that look alike. What is the greatest challenge in your job? Well, I think that the greatest challenge is coming up with elegant uh, solutions for simple solutions for complex problems. Like the game is a very, very difficult uh, machine with millions of different parts. Player behavior, player understanding of the rules, and uh, player uh, wants and desires. Uh, this uh, is a very difficult thing to, it's like a million piece puzzle that you have to put together and it requires uh, a lot of even if you tweak a little rule here it's it has all this uh, butterfly effect consequences in all the rest of the game and uh, since I work more in depth about the story of the game one really difficult part of it uh, most recently 
uh, that I found was, well, how can I make a story that is uh, involving and uh, interesting and with multiple things happening, uh, but knowing that some people will not play some quests and some people will play these other quests and I don't want the, the, que the quest that people play and the quest that people don't play to have the same significance to the development of the story. So that is that was a, diff a very difficult process to understand how I can make people experience the story and not get lost and knowing that perhaps they will not experience a part of the story and that cannot be taken uh, as a premise to talk about something else in another week in the, in the campaign, for example. Yeah. yeah. All right. What IP would you like to see Dragori develop next for a board game or an RPG or just it could just be a whatever other product? Yeah, one thing that uh, I know it's almost inconceivable because I've never heard of this company uh, uh, doing licensing for other companies is uh, anything by Square Enix. I, I grew up playing practically every single Final Fantasy game there is and uh, I really, th I would really be ecstatic if I could develop uh, like a Final Fantasy Tactics game or something like that. Uh, that would be a really cool board game project. But I know that it is maybe a distant dream because I've never seen uh, anything being licensed to third parties. Yeah. Um, what is the D&D &D or design philosophy for the RPG module? Um, like what kind of DM and players did you have in mind when writing it? Yeah, we were kind of, if you, if you take a look at the other games that we've developed, if you take a look at how many game modes there are for Arena the Contest, for example, there are so many different game modes. Uh, I, we try to encompass and to include everyone always. So uh, we're making the the books uh, for the RPG. Um, of course, since it's uh, like since you need the core rule books um, to even begin uh, taking a look at ours, uh, there is a level of complexity that is assumed. But uh, we're trying to make it so that experienced dungeon masters experienced masters they can uh, have a blast uh, doing like the most interesting adventure they ever saw printed on a book but we know and we work really hard uh, to include people who are just beginning because we are doing kind of this bridge you know uh, we have a lot of people in our community they are board gamers they have never played rpg and we know that there are people in the RPG community that, that took a glance at our project, got interested, and maybe they will want to uh, get involved in board gaming. So everything we do is to increase the community. And so uh, this was our philosophy. Well, let's give options to the experienced players, but let, let's make it playable and interesting uh, to, the, uh, to the newcomers. Yeah. Uh, who is your favorite character, uh, either past, present, maybe, maybe to either design and why? Uh, I think it's the wizard, Abaddon. Uh -huh. uh, I, I think that on the board is a blast to play. Uh, you can manipulate movements of the different combatants and you can uh, attack more than one enemy at the same time. I really think that's nice. And uh, he's also a very interesting character that has many opportunities for uh, developing both in the RPG and in the story of the board game as well. So I think he's a very... If you take a look at him, you say, well, okay, it's a wizard. Like, what is different about him? But I really enjoy 
everything that we're creating about the important project. Awesome. Uh, last question. What was your main inspiration for the world of Teneras? Um, I think that's that's kind of a, of a difficult question. It's really like, uh, since it's a very rich world, I'd say that different parts of it were inspired in different uh, different other projects and different other worlds. Uh, we tr really try to take what's best, what we like best of our, of our references and everything we grew up with to create a really uh, new, unique world uh, with many different aspects that you can see anywhere else. So that's, that, that's really a, a difficult question. All right. Well, thanks, Dan, for doing the interview. Thank you so much.